we actually have a pretty good idea of what might have happened before the Big Bang. That is, as long as you define the Big Bang as the universe's early hot, dense, expanding state that's well described by Einstein's equations. That picture of the Big Bang is very solid, down to about a trillionth of a second after the supposed beginning of time. We can make good guesses down to about 10 to the power of negative 30th of a second, but did anything happen before that? Well, maybe everything. The universe almost certainly did not explode from a singular point. Now, we covered that misconception recently. These days, the best accepted description of the time before the Big Bang is given by inflation theory. The idea is that the energy trapped in the so-called inflaton field caused exponential expansion of space. This was the bang in the Big Bang. In previous episodes, we looked at why cosmologists think we need inflation and what could possibly cause it. That last one is definitely worth a watch if you haven't yet, because today we're going to peer further back in time and explore a stunning implication of inflationary theory. See, if we accept that inflation happened at all, it's hard to escape the conclusion that it never actually stopped. And in fact, our universe is but one bubble among countless others in an eternally inflating greater universe. Cosmic inflation, if it actually happened, was driven by the inflaton field, which had the bizarre property of containing a ton of energy even in the absence of particles. It had a non-zero vacuum energy. Now, in a recent episode, we talked about how such a field could drive exponential expansion but we stop short of discussing what the field actually is and what the real implications are of its existence. Before we make any real predictions about the behavior of an inflating universe, we probably should know more about the field that drives it. To start with, you need a particular type of field to cause inflation, something called a scalar field. This is actually the simplest type of quantum field because it's described by a single number, a scalar, everywhere in space. Other fields, like the particle field or the electromagnetic field, are described by multiple components and vectors instead of single numbers. We know that scalar fields exist, or at least one does, that's the Higgs field, which gives elementary particles their mass. The inflaton field would be another such scalar field, or it might even be the Higgs field. Physicists are still arguing over that one. I mentioned last time that quantum fields can hold energy without actually having particles. They do this through a process called self-interaction. You can think of a field with a high field strength as being full of virtual particles. These are ephemeral vibrations in the field that are constantly tugging at the field as the field tugs at them. This self-interaction gives the field some potential energy. It's potential energy because the field would much rather reconfigure itself into a lower energy state, in which case that stored energy would be converted into another form, for example, into real particles. Although scalar fields are the simplest, they can exhibit complicated relationships between this potential energy and the field strength. In our last inflation episode, we looked at the case of old inflation proposed by Alan Guth in 1979. Guth's idea is that there's a local minimum in potential energy that allows the inflaton field to get stuck in a false vacuum state. When that state decays, potential energy is released as real particles, ending inflation and reheating the universe in an expanding bubble. The random nature of this version of inflaton decay means that many such bubbles should form, i.e. multiple universes exist. But we also saw that there were problems with this approach. Old inflation predicts empty firewall bubbles that look nothing like the early phase of our universe. A more promising idea is something called slow roll inflation. This was proposed by Andre Linde, Andreas Albrecht, and Paul Steinhardt in 1982, just a few years after Guth's proposal. The idea of slow roll inflation is that the inflaton field isn't stuck at a local minimum in the potential, but rather it's on a very weakly sloping plateau leading towards a deeper valley. In that case, the field strength would very slowly roll down that slope. As it did, the energy would drop very, very slowly. 
That would still give us our near constant energy density needed to power inflation. And then, as the roll sped up towards the valley, inflation would end. But it wouldn't end as a random process. It wouldn't require quantum tunneling to get started. Instead, the entire region of the inflating universe would approach this minimum at the same time. Inflation would shut down smoothly and the universe would be reheated everywhere all at once. This gives us the expanding hot dense universe that we know and love in our Big Bang model. But if slow roll inflation stops everywhere at once, how does it last forever and how does it give us multiple universes? Before we get to that, I want a quick word on why the inflaton field should have one potential energy curve over any other. Now, the behavior of this field depends on some unverified physics, but a suitable inflaton field fits with some grand unified theories. Those are theories that combine the strong nuclear force with electromagnetic and weak forces, as well as theories which also unify gravity, like string theory. These theories predict phase transitions in the behavior of fields as the temperature of the universe changes. As the universe cools, different vacuum states can appear, possibly trapping the inflaton field. Very flat potential energy slopes are also possible in these theories, enabling slow roll inflation, or a combination of both. The detailed physics requires yet more episodes, so for now, take my word for it that inflation fits some theory, even if that theory is also entirely speculative. As speculative as inflation is, it does make some predictions, and some are even testable. I mentioned that quantum fields fluctuate due to the intrinsic randomness of the quantum world. As the inflaton field rolls down the potential energy hill, the field's strength should fluctuate slightly. That means some regions of the universe would finish inflation a little ahead of others. And that would lead to very small density and temperature fluctuations in the matter produced after inflation. And we see those fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background. These same fluctuations collapsed under their own gravity to become the first galaxies. In fact, this is perhaps the best evidence we have that inflation is plausible. It can predict the pattern of temperature fluctuations in the CMB. They should, according to inflation, come in all possible sizes on the sky and be evenly distributed in abundance, with giant fluctuations as likely to occur as tiny ones, and all physical sizes in between. And that is exactly what we see in the CMB. But seeding all of the structure in our universe is probably the least impressive thing those quantum fluctuations did. They also give eternal inflation and multiple universes. In slow roll inflation, exponential expansion should grind to a halt over large regions as the inflaton field decays. As I mentioned, small fluctuations in the inflaton field would lead to slight differences in when the inflation ends from one point to the next. But quantum fluctuations come in all sizes, and a rare strong fluctuation would force the inflaton field back up the potential energy slope, causing inflation to last a lot longer in that spot. Such fluctuations would be extremely rare, and so you wouldn't think they'd count for much. But remember, inflation causes exponential expansion. The further up the slope the inflaton field gets pushed, the faster that expansion. So an uphill fluctuation in a tiny patch of space would very quickly outgrow its surroundings, producing a new inflating region. That region would then continue to decay, spawning new universes, but also spawning new inflating regions. The result is stunning. Inflation never stops, but rather forms a fractal structure of infinitely expanding space interspersed with bubble universes of all different sizes. And to get this started, you need a spec, a fraction of the Planck energy within a Planck volume a millionth of a gram in a space 10 to the power of negative 35 meters across should do the trick. Assuming a quantum field of the right type, that spec will start inflating. The exponential nature of the process will take over and the spec becomes infinite universes. Okay, cool story, bro. Admittedly, this all raises a few questions. How plausible is this mysterious inflaton field? 
can eternal inflation last infinitely into the past as well as the future? What happens when bubbles collide? There are also deep possible connections between inflation and string theory and with the holographic principle, as described in one of Stephen Hawking's last papers. Good material for the eternally expanding future library of PBS Spacetime. Hey everyone, so summer travel has kept me from doing comment responses for the past few episodes. On the plus side, I learned how to kite surf, but now that I'm back on firm ground, I'll respond to questions from two episodes. Did time start at the Big Bang? And what caused the Big Bang, the real physics of inflation? A couple of people mentioned George Lemaitre, who predicted the expansion of the universe before Edwin Hubble's observations. Lemaitre was a Jesuit priest and astronomer physicist. He realized that Vesto Slipher's observations of receding galaxies could be explained by an expanding universe and solved Einstein's equations to show this. Lemaitre doesn't get as much credit in popular accounts as Hubble, and that's definitely unfair. But the reason Hubble gets most of the credit is that before Hubble, we had no idea what the distances were to Slipher's galaxies, and so we couldn't properly test this expanding universe hypothesis. PUP314 asks if the reheating of the universe after inflation is what gave us the cosmic background radiation. Well, not directly. The CMB was released about 400,000 years after the end of inflation when the reheated universe first became transparent. It was around 3,000 Kelvin at that time. The reheating I'm talking about happened right at the end of inflation, which is basically corresponding to the beginning of our universe. Then, an ocean of inflaton particles released by the decaying inflaton field turned into extremely energetic particles and radiation. How energetic? Enough to give the universe a temperature of 10 to the power of 27 or 28 Kelvin. That energy would then end up in the cosmic background radiation photons, but not for a while. Some of you asked how our cosmic inflation episode explains what caused the Big Bang, which is what we claimed in the title. Also, the standard Big Bang theory doesn't explain the initial expansion at all. It includes an expansion rate in its initial conditions and then tries to explain everything that happened afterwards. Inflation actually gives a physical reason for the universe to have started with a rapid outward expansion rate in terms of pretty well understood physics. So inflation doesn't explain where the very first speck of space, time and energy came from, but it does give a potential explanation for the bang part of the Big Bang. Dominic H quips, did time start at the Big Bang? Let me guess, depends on your definitions of did time start and Big Bang. Uh, exactly right, Dominic. Bad science starts with bad questions. What's the meaning of life, the universe and everything? 42, for the right definition of life, the universe and everything. It may seem pedantic and nerdy, but the more precise the question, the more useful the answer. In the case of Big Bang, many scientists now mean the period of regular Hubble-like expansion that followed the initial kick. And we think that kick was caused by inflation. To those of you surprised to see me out in the real world in our recent Stellar series, don't worry, they caught me again and took away my kite. And I'm now safely back in this weird computer graphics limbo. There's gotta be a back door here somewhere.